the Wells Fargo Bank had just one office in downtown San Francisco when it formally separated from the Wells Fargo Express Company in 1905. By the early 2000s, Wells Fargo had grown to become the fourth largest bank in the United States, employing 259,000 people and serving one in three US households. A lot of Wells Fargo's success in the past decade or so has come from cross-selling, essentially getting existing customers to buy more products and services from you. And of course, selling new products to existing customers is far easier and far less expensive than trying to continually find new customers. Cross-selling is a legitimate strategy used every day by thousands of businesses. But as far back as 2008, a whistleblower reported excessive pressure was driving bank employees to open unauthorised new accounts to meet their targets. The company defended this by saying that they didn't give customers any accounts or services they didn't need. And that seemed enough to keep everybody quiet. Until 2013, when the Los Angeles Times published an article titled Wells Fargo Pressure Cooker Sales Culture Comes at a Cost. It quoted examples of employees opening duplicate accounts for people without their knowledge and scanning lists of bank customers who'd been pre-approved for a credit card and then just ordering them a card without their consent. So then, when the LA Times was behind the story, everybody started to listen. Other Wells Fargo employees started to come forward with ethical concerns, complaining about, about unbearable pressure to sell new services every day and threats of being fired if they didn't meet their targets. Employees who were not meeting their targets were told to encourage family and friends to, to sign up for multiple accounts. And there was even one case of a bank employee talking a homeless woman into opening six different accounts with fees totaling $39 a month. There were other ethical issues as well. For example, one employee was told to, told to falsify the phone numbers of dissatisfied customers so they couldn't be randomly called as part of the bank's customer satisfaction surveys. Over time, the bank fired around 5,000 employees. Their CEO said, this type of activity has no place in our culture. But, but was it really the employees who, who were to blame in what the LA Times described as the company's pressure cooker sales culture? In September 2016, it was revealed the bank had opened more than 2 million bank and credit card accounts for customers without the customer's permission between 2011 and 2015, resulting in $2.6 million in unwarranted fees for tens of thousands of unsuspecting customers. And subsequent investigation revealed that the true number of unwanted accounts was closer to 3.5 million, and that over half a million customers had been signed up for an online bill payment service they hadn't asked for, for which they were charged. So, is it really reasonable to think that, that unethical practice on this scale was entirely down to a relatively small number of misguided employees? Time magazine said the bank routinely and systematically used high pressure tactics to push employees to sell products and services that did not serve the best interests of customers creating a toxic environment that almost inevitably led to fraud. In 2016, Wells Fargo were fined $185 million, and they were fined an additional $1 billion for mortgage overcharging and forcing customers to take out unnecessary car insurance. The banker's CEO, John Strumpf, was ordered to appear in front of a US Senate banking committee hearing, but he claimed we never directed nor wanted our team members to provide products and services that our customers didn't want. But that's what happened. Senators were unconvinced and Strumpf had to resign. An internal investigation in 2017 reported that Strumpf was a, a hands-off manager, overly optimistic and too committed to sales goals. It maintained a decentralised management structure, where divisional managers were treated like kings or queens of their territory and encouraged to just run it as their own. 
Ironically, Forbes magazine published an article in 2012 titled The Bank That Works, in which it said Wells Fargo had grown rich by keeping their heads down and avoiding unnecessary drama. Well, <laughs> apparently not. The article also said that Strumpf had banned managers from having doors in their offices in order to encourage openness. It is interesting, in fact really worrying, to think that malpractice on this scale could go on unnoticed in hundreds of towns and cities around America. What were management thinking? What were regulators doing? Is it, is it not their job to make sure that this sort of thing never happens? In 2018, the US Federal Reserve forbid the bank from growing any further until it could prove it had taken steps to ensure it could protect the needs of its customers. In 2020, the US government announced that ex-CEO John Strumpf was barred from ever working in the banking sector again, and he was fined $17.5 million. The company has now changed its policy on developing its leaders from within, and has appointed at least 10 outsiders to senior positions in the past two years. The company rebranded and, in 2018, ran an ad campaign under the tagline Wells Fargo, established 1852, re-established 2018. The company say their culture has changed and that aggressive sales targets have been removed. Although articles in the New York Times and The Guardian in 2019 both quoted Wells Fargo employees who said that the, the sales culture is still very strong. John Shrewsbury, Wells Fargo's chief financial officer, said in the Financial Times that the bank's employees had adopted more of a compliance mindset and a customer experience mindset, rather than a convert customers and expand the business mindset. Hopefully, this combination of punitive action against the company and senior executives, US government intervention, public and media outrage, and management change will create and embed a new and more healthy culture at Wells Fargo.